Hey guys, what's up? We are back with another video today, and today we are doing a Dallas Cowboys Mock Draft 2.0. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. Help me reach my goal of 900 subscribers before the end of February. Only about 7% of you are subscribed right now, so hit that subscribe button. Help me out. It's absolutely free. Also, make sure that you like or even dislike this video. Whatever your thoughts are, make sure that you share them as well as comment all your thoughts and opinions down below. I'd love to know your guys' opinions. I know you Cowboys fans out there are very, um, let's just say, opinion-oriented. Uh, so let me know down below. You guys let me know in the last one, and I'm glad to and welcoming criticism and stuff like that. And hopefully this mock draft is more of what you're looking for uh, and adding on to what I think you guys should be looking for in this upcoming draft. So let's get started into today's video. But also, one more thing, make sure that you check out the plot, uh, playlist if you want to check out the previous Cowboys video or any of my other mock drafts this season. So... At pick 26, I have the Dallas Cowboys selecting Devon Witherspoon, the cornerback out of Illinois. So a lot of you guys think that the Cowboys should draft a cornerback in the first round, and a lot of a lot of people want to have like a Joey Porter Jr. Um, or even a Cam Smith out of South Carolina. Uh, both of those guys were gone uh, off the board. Devin Witherspoon, don't don't be don't get me wrong. Devin Witherspoon is a great player, um, but he was the last one available, and to be honest, if he was gone, I probably would have went a different route, because um, outside of those first couple of cornerbacks, I don't think that there's any first round talent, so outside of Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon, Joey Porter Jr. out of Penn State, Cam Smith out of South Carolina, and Devon Witherspoon out of Illinois, I may be missing one, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but out of those guys, I think those are the only first round worthy quarterbacks, cornerbacks, so Heading on to the next pick at pick number 58, I traded pick number 58 and pick number 129 to the Miami Dolphins for pick 77 and 84. So moved up a couple of slots. There wasn't too many players that I'm like, I have to have this guy or stuff like that. So I thought, move back some slots, upgrade picks massively, only have to jump down about, uh, about 20 slots and can jump up about 50. So... With the pick number 77, I have the Dallas Cowboys selecting Xavier Hutchinson, the wide receiver out of Iowa State. So one of the things I like about this pick is Xavier Hutchinson has had a great senior bowl so far. So um, in the past couple of days, the senior bowl has been going on as well as the Shrine Bowl. Uh, both are really important. And Xavier Hutchinson, despite bad quarterback play, has really showed that he has some good uh, parts about him. He's a great ball catcher. Uh, has does a great job at using his big frame at six foot three to be able to go up high, point the ball and stuff like that. That is a big help for Dak Prescott going into next season. Xavier Hutchinson is one of my sleeper uh, wide receiver draft picks. I really like him in the mid to late. Second round to maybe from basically mid second round to mid third round, I guess is the best uh, demonstration of where I think he could be. So with pick number 85, I have the Dallas Cowboys selecting Blake Freeland, the offensive tackle out of BYU. So I think that Freeland is one of the better mid-round draft prospects on the offensive line, personally. I think that he fits a lot of different roles for the Cowboys. He can play offensive tackle. You can put him in at guard. Um, I think that he does a good job overall at filling in all of those spots, and I think that that is one of the things that taking Blake Freeman, or Freeland, I'm sorry, uh, is a upgrade at that position. So... On to the next pick at pick 90, I have Joe Tipman, the center out of Wisconsin. We're going to continue to beef up that offensive line for both Tony Pollard and Zeke Elliott. Um, all of these guys, really. Joe Tipman at pick 90, some people think that he is the best center prospect in all of this class, so you really cannot be getting much more value. Um, I personally like John Michael Schmitz a little bit better, but again, this is a third round pick and you're getting a guy could who could be a day one starter if you really needed him to then at pick number 158 i have them selecting julius brintz 
the cornerback out of Kansas State. So we're going to double down on the cornerback position once again. Brits has had an amazing uh, Shrine Bowl performance, I think is where he's at. Uh, has played really well. Has really proven himself to be a solid contributor and can play both inside at nickel and outside at CB2. Um, I think that that could really bring diversity to that group. And if you do have an injury or something like that, that brings uh, depth to that group as well. So at pick number 163, I have the Dallas Cowboys selecting Shaka Haywood, the linebacker out of Duke. Really with this pick, um, I think that linebacker is more of a position of need than some of the Cowboys fans in my last mock draft thought. Uh, Leighton Van Der Esch is going to probably be gone after this season is my expectation as an NFL, as a Bears fan, as an NFL fan. I think he's gone. Uh, plus, I don't think he's as good of a player as the Dallas Cowboys want at that position. Shaka Hayward is a later round guy, but has proven to be a solid contributor at Duke and played pretty solid at the senior bowl and i actually could see him going a lot higher than 163 maybe in the more uh 120s 130s range rather than this late in the draft i think shaka hayward actually is a steal at this point in the draft uh and i really liked him his value at that position so going on to the next pick at pick 170 i have them selecting andre iswa i i I'm saying it wrong. I'm sorry. The wide receiver out of Princeton. I know I'm screwing up his name. I'm sorry. Until I hear it pronounced more, I'm going to probably mispronounce it. Either way, is a little, is definitely not a little, is a very raw prospect. Um, the problem with him is that he does come from smaller competition. He's pretty raw. Um, but... He also has a lot of quick bursts to him, has the explosive layer to him, um, and I think can overall be a good player and could possibly be a wide receiver too, but more likely a wide receiver three or wide receiver four. And those are very valuable pieces to have, especially in the later rounds of this draft. So, as we move on to pick 176, we head back to that Fighting Illini secondary, taking Sidney Brown the safety out of Illinois. So, the reason why I pick Sidney Brown in this pick is because I think that safety is always a good position to have three or four guys that can go in and out, have depth, because if you need to have uh, five defensive backs out for a play or out on the field for a play or something like that, maybe you need a third safety out there. Um, so I think that. Sidney Brown can play this role. He played superb this past year in college. Both him and his twin brother, Chase Brown, are both extremely good players going into this draft. Chase Brown, if you don't know, is the running back out of Illinois. Um, very solid contributor, plus played well. Um, I think that both of them are solid players, and I think that it could fit well in Dallas, especially for Mike McCarthy and his defense. So at pick 246, and this is, I think, the biggest steal of the whole draft. It's Chandler Zavala, the guard out of NC State. Really, in perspective, I think Zavala goes in the fourth round. Zavala has played incredible at the Shrine Bowl, has really shown out and to, shown to be, he was the left guard, if you don't know, uh, for the left tackle that was just picked out from NC State. Akeem Aquanu uh, last year. So both of them were really good, and Chandler Zavala was actually a little bit underrated going into this draft process. And I think with the combine and with Shrine Bowl performance and all of that, I think that he will start to develop some credibility within him in order to be a more fourth or maybe fifth round draft pick. But getting him late here in the seventh round is an absolute steal. So, Cowboys fans, how do you grade my draft class? A, B, F? What do you think so far? Tell me in the comments down below. Hit the two videos down below. One will be a playlist, one will be a video. And hit the subscribe button up here. Help, uh, help a fellow channel out. So, that's all for today's video as always. Have a great day. Bye.